Woo, check this out. Existing home sales plummet to the lowest level since 2010. What does this mean for you as a consumer? What should you be aware of? As we see, home sales continue to plummet for a myriad of reasons. Let me go over the top three right now. One, seasonality. Every year this time, a year during heading into the fall and the winter, we see slow start to set, uh, slow down considerably. Now, the scary part is at what rate they are in comparison to the last few years. This is married up with high interest rates. People are sitting still trying to watch the market. They're kind of seizing up. Also, low inventory creates low turnover. So those three things are keeping people on the sidelines during the housing market right now and, and them not understanding exactly what's going on and how to take advantage. Who wins in this market if you do want to step your foot in the water of buying or selling or investing in real estate? In my mind, as long as you're educated and go about the right way, there's really no bad time to buy, a, buy in real estate or sell in real estate or invest because you have to understand your numbers, your situation, and how to get in the right way. I partner with the right people like myself as an agent, lenders, financial advisors, understand how to get in at the right place, right time, and for the right reasons. I, pull, I believe that you can truly win this market as well as any market if you know what you're doing. Now, one thing, slowing sales creates a little bit of a seize up by sellers, making them nervous if their house is on the market. They're much more apt to negotiate if they're nervous. They wanna get rid of their house, or they wanna unload it because of the fact that they are scared it's not gonna sell. This includes new construction as well. Builders are under the understanding, like, hey, times are slowing, let's kinda of tighten up, we wanna hold on less inventory, let's get rid of the inventory we do have out there to make sure that we aren't carrying too much risk or debt on the, on the books. This bodes well for buyers completely because then they can negotiate with the current owner or potential builder. Definitely understand how to go into those situations and then arm yourself with the right tools to come out on top. Just a few years ago, just after COVID, 2020, 2021, we saw everybody throwing the kitchen sink at a house, no pun intended, to buy a home. You were throwing out inspections, you're throwing out appraisals, you're over overbidding, you're in a bidding war, you're, you're doing anything and everything you can to get the house that you want, going against everybody, tons of cash being thrown around. That's not the case right now. Pricing has continued to climb steadily since that, but also buying power or the negotiation power has went back to the buyer, giving you time and energy to spend on negotiating buyer's closing costs being paid for by, by the seller. And inspections, appraisal still come into play, less competitive offer situations, putting the power back on the side of the table of the buyer, making it more of an even transaction where everybody still can win. Sellers get a more than fair price for the home with the equity they've had that has built up over the years, including the average sale price and what their house might be worth, the built-in equity is a win for the seller. On the buyer's side, they're winning because they're not having coming to the table with less money because of the fact that maybe the seller's paying for some of those closing costs based upon the equity they built up in the home, allows them to feel really good about getting into the home, also getting an inspection, understanding that house is in good working order condition, that they can feel safe and secure in that house. A lot of good things, okay? So that's why we want to understand what the market is actually doing, what the situation is in need of, and how to go in and negotiate where everybody can win, everybody walks away from the table, and at the end, the buyer gets the keys to the house and the seller moves on to the next situation. Also, with that being said, housing prices have continued to climb or steadily raised, flattened at the worst. So sellers are selling max dollars for their home. Even in comparison to you know, last year, housing price, average sale price is up locally and nationally. Something to think about as a seller, you're not losing by buying right now. Also, last but not least, let me pose you this question and you decide for yourself. Back in the 1980s when the interest rates were super high, pricing was considerably lower, uh, like drastically lower for a home. Did prices go down or up once the market interest rates went up to like 18%? They slowed, but not by much in terms of price of houses. The housing price have continued to go up and they will continue to go up. So from here on out, would you rather buy a, pri a home for the price it is today with a little bit with a higher interest rate and then refinance on the road because we know we will see those come down eventually or wait three to five years and pay future prices at about you know, 10, 20, 30, 40% increase on pricing at a potentially lower interest rate. That question is yours to answer, but I would be willing to bet based on the market and the situation, it's better to buy the house now at the lowest price possible with the intent of refinancing down the road versus waiting for that house to increase and appreciate by 30, 40, 50, 60, even $100,000 in some case, depending on the neighborhood and then paying a lower interest rate. Let's keep more money in your pocket and have a better situation for you and your family going forward. You buy a home, buy a home sell a home, or invest. I'd love to be a guy. Hope you have a great day.